Okay, well thank you for um, asking me to talk today. Um, I'll probably come from a, a different approach uh, compared to the uh, previous two um, presenters that I'm more systems based person. What I want to um, take you through today is a trial that we're putting together here at RMIT that we think might help academics actually uh, deal with the issue of data storage. So with, with most um, higher education providers in Australia we have a, a data storage policy um, and the onus is very much on the academic to, to comply with the policy. They're expected to complete their data plan, etc. But very little support is actually provided to the academic to comply with the policy. Um, and again, as with most higher education providers in Australia, we have software, in our case it's Redbox, which is uh, meant to assist the academics in actually bringing together their, their data around their research projects, their outputs and their actual uh, data they've used underpinning the research. But at the moment, uh, Redbox, the way we've implemented here at RMIT, requires the academic to go in and pull this um, information together. And most of our academics quite bluntly tell us that they've uh, got better things to do. So our plan is to actually assist them uh, actually bringing this stuff together. At RMIT, we use Research Master to capture all information regarding our funded research projects. And for us, it provides um, some very rich metadata. We have metadata on the chief investigators on a project, uh, the, the fund source, uh, the amounts awarded, the description of the research, um, our FLR codes, uh, descriptions of the research, etc. And whenever a research agreement is signed at RMIT, that's whether it's competitive or contract, um, a record is created in Research Master by staff in our research innovation portfolio, which is the equivalent of research offices, I suppose, around Australia. What our teams also do is they open up what's called work breakdown structure in the SAP system, which is essentially a research account. And this is where all of the finance information is actually processed. Our view is that our research office staff can also allocate storage space at this point. As with our colleagues at, at UniSA, we use Research Master to capture all information regarding our funded research projects. And for us, it provides rich metadata. So we know who the chief investigators are, where our funding sources are from, the amounts awarded, our descriptions of the research, the fields of research, etc. So whenever a research agreement is signed at RMIT, and it goes through a process of being signed by our uh, VVC R&I, and this is whether it's competitive or contract research. Um, a record's created in Research Master by staff in our research innovation portfolio, which is essentially uh, the same as a research office anywhere else. And what we also do is we also open up a research account in our SAP system, which is called a work breakdown structure over here at RMIT. And what we've been thinking about is really our research staff could also be allocating storage space at the same time. So what we're intending to do is with a very small sample of um, academics, and that's our most recent ARC linkage recipients, um, we're going to run a bit of a trial using CloudStore, which is uh, run by RNET, where the research office will actually allocate storage for these projects. The advantage being, one, that CloudStore offers uh, 100 gigabytes of data per academic and very easy to use. So um, we can drop and drag into folders. Um, it's web-based, so it's transferable. And what we'll then do is we'll record that URL in our Research Master. So then what we do have is we've actually matched the metadata up to where the storage is actually, um, where the data is actually being stored. We can then push this back into Redbox, etc. And then at least we know for any given particular research project, or at least the, the ARC linkage ones, we'll know where the, the actual data is stored. So our plan is to at least try this with our ARC and NHMRC funded research and then hopefully roll this out as a, as a growing or well, something that we can roll out into our other types of research. So um, we'll be very interested to see how our, our trial progresses. It'll be a bit of a change for our academics who are used to basically storing their data where they feel they'd like to. It's stored in all sorts of weird and wonderful places since we've, we've done a few audits around the place. And um, so what we hope to do is actually change the culture a little bit. One, to make it maybe put a bit of trust in the research office that we're not trying to do anything evil with their research or anything with the data, but just at least that first step of being able to curate it and know where it is. So for us, it's the start of a, a very long and hopefully fun ride, but I'm sure we'll be having some, um, some scary moments along the way. And that's it for me. Thank you, Jim. So the first question is, will you store human participant data in cloud store? Um, this is one of the things we're, we're looking at um, in terms of the, the, so one of the things we are doing is we're going to meet with Arnett to, to talk about um, storing data, but we, we think we probably could. We do know that it is being used um, currently for a lot of um, research projects around the place, but obviously too we want to make sure that um, anything we put up there is secure. The next question, when does the trial finish? Do you plan on sharing your results? 
Yes, we'd love to share the results. So our trial starting now. So um, we've only got, as I said, we only had eight ARC linkage recipients in the last round, which we thought was a nice little tr um, group to work with. So we're in the process at the moment of actually putting together the. Um, we've actually sort of written up the process of how we think this will work. And then basically the, the agreements for linkage projects normally take a little bit longer due to the participation agreements being signed off. So we expect it probably be later in the year when the, the research actually starts. So that, that's at the point that we'll actually be allocating the, the storage on Cloud Store. And then yes, we'll definitely um, uh, happy to share the results of how that goes. Thank you. Our question, does this mean that a successful pilot would lead to RMIT storing all research data on Cloud Store? That is something that's a potential at the moment. Um, probably what we're more interested in is just the concept of um, would academics be happy with us all allocating storage space? Cloud Store is a very quick solution for us because um, it's, it's in the cloud, we can actually allocate the, as in we, as in the, the research office can allocate the storage on behalf of the academic and it doesn't involve us having to um, invest the infrastructure. We do have to see whether we'd actually run out of storage space on Cloud Store and um, we also need to figure out what we would do with Arnet stops, etc. But the plan is at least to, to have a, a system where all data storage is allocated centrally by the research office. Okay, thank you. Will there be any business-to-business -business connectivity between Cloud Store and Research Master at RMIT or is that a manual workflow? At the moment it's a manual workflow. Okay, thank you. How are issues of data privacy and security managed in Cloud Store? So the same thing again, it's, it's the Cloud Store, think of it as something similar to, to Google Drive, so the, the academic actually gets to control who has access to the data. Um, at the moment our main point of having this record centrally is so we just at least know where the data is. And again, this is the, the issues we'll have to um, negotiate as we go forward. But our, our first port of call, well, what we actually want to get out of the trial is uh, will academics use it? And also, can we actually have a system where centrally a research office would know at least where all the story, where the data is stored for a given research project? And who decides what's star stored in that cloud store location? I, is yeah, I think the that, chief investigator responsible or will all data relating to the project be mandated? Yep. I think, again, this is probably what we're looking at our policy. We, we're not expecting researchers to use Cloud Store uh, for their, I suppose, their transitional data. We just do want it at the end of the project. Um, so whether that's just the data they do the analysis on, etc. Primary materials, I think that we probably haven't even gone down that path yet. But the plan is, yeah, that the chief investigator would be the person responsible for ensuring that the data is actually in Cloud Store. Thanks. And could Cloud Store be used to make data publicly available at the end of the research project? Um, as we understand, it does connect up with things like TARDIS, so there is the potential of bringing that data back down. And I suppose that's the next step we're looking at as well as working with our, our various areas. Um, I suppose our point of view is as long as we know it, where it is, it then can be distributed to um, you know, wherever it needs to go. <coughs> There's a question. Our academics, um, I think this is from Sharon Wise at UTS. Our academics use Cloud Store via a uh, of their own initiative. Is there a management console where you can allocate space? This is what we've been um, sort of playing with the last couple of weeks. Is basically just setting up our own accounts and then seeing and sharing and etc. So this is this is one of the things where we often meet with our net about is um, actually getting that administrative space administrative space um, sorted out for us. Okay, is the data stored in Cloud Store physically located in Australia and governed by Australian legislation and privacy requirements? Yes, yes it is. Yeah, that was a that was a major concern for us, so yes it is. Yeah. Yeah, great answer there. <laughs> um, question to Jim, but also to the other panellists. Is there a role for the library in this project? Oh, definitely for us because from our point of view, we're not in the, um, the business of actually um, I suppose pushing the, the data out, etc. So that next step of getting the data into a repository or pushing that data out, that doesn't really sit in our remit. So definitely there's a role for us with the library. And we actually very I work very closely with the library with that sort of model. So for instance our uh, publications repository, the publications all come through our team and um, are collected for ERA, obviously no longer heard C. Um, and other purposes, but then we actually push that data through to the repository where they manage the, the repository side of things and we'd be seeing that our research data would be treated in the same way. 
Okay, there's a question for Jim. Um, is your pilot a joint venture with Arnett? We're off to meet with Arnett to see, um, basically to take those next steps. But I mean, that's something we've we're just been pushing out ourselves at the moment in the research office. Um, and basically just playing around in cloud store in-house here and um, pretending we're researchers ourselves and setting up our own, sending storage to each other and uploading into it. So um, we're obviously going to meet with them and keep them aware of what we're doing, but it's our own initiation really, our own initiative, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, is cloud store data encrypted in transit and on cloud? Again, these are the questions that we need to talk to, um, to Arnett about. Okay, thank you. And um, what are your views on requirements for researchers to release their data as part of publication? One of the things we are looking at long term now is actually trying to um, capture the whole life cycle of research. So um, when we're looking now at, again, if I use the ARC example, we know where the, the data is actually stored. What we're also starting to do now is relate our publications back to the funding source. So I think in time what we'll, I can see a situation where what we want to be able to do is measure research from idea probably through to impact and all the steps along the way and I think um, relating publications back to projects, back to data sets will be something that we'll definitely be doing here at RMIT. Okay, thank you.